Ben Nevis is Scotland's highest mountain at 4,413 feet, and most people who ascend it come up via the pony track to the west of the mountain. But tucked round the other side is the magnificent north face of the Ben, the most alpine looking landscape in Scotland. And to ascend the mountain from this side, you have to tackle the Carmor Gerard Garret, an airy ridge which runs from Carmor Gerag to the highest point in Scotland. It really is a fabulous route, the best way to the top of Ben Nevis for sure, and also the most alpine route in Scotland. It's not a short day, it's quite committing, and the route goes for almost 18 kilometres and covers nearly 1,600 metres of ascent, so it's not one for the faint-hearted. So, to do this I started early, I was up at half three in the morning from my park up, and a short drive later, more than that, later at the end of the video by the way, a short drive later I found myself at the starting point for the climb, which is the North Face car park. I got my stuff ready and I was climbing long before the sun was due to rise and the stars were sparkling in the sky above. It was going to be a nice day. Oh wee, right. I hope. <laughs> hope you can see me okay. It's the middle of the night. And I've been, it's what time is it now? 5.30. It's an hour till sunrise. And I've been walk I've been up since 3.30. A, a true alpine start. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm grumbling a wee bit. But more about that, I'll maybe come on to why I'm grumbling and <laughs> complaining. Not like me uh, later on, but let me spin you around and I'll show you. Uh, yes, the, the view that I can just about see now, and what a view it is. Oh, hopefully you can see it. I've cranked up the, uh, the ISO, I'm maybe blown out now, but anyway, behind me, I was talking about an alpine start, this is going to be, it's probably the most alpine route in Scotland, I, I think, and it's, it's maybe, could I say it's where it all began, YouTube-wise for me, maybe a bit more about that later on, but certainly, uh, one of the videos that I did in my early, early days, up here was was the first one that kind of got popular. But again, more than that later on. I'm home to head up here. I don't know if I'll get to the top for sunrise, but that's the plan. I'll not get to the top of this. This is Ben Nevis, by the way. But I might get to the top of one of the peaks up here for the sun coming up. That's the plan. But yeah, nice and early. So I need to just watch my step. It's a bit icy this morning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, really looking forward to this and hopefully I can bring you some cracking views of Alpine Scotland. Right, let's go. Body. These are big hills. Obviously, Ben Nevis is the highest mountain in Scotland, but the first one must be in the top five, top ten, Carmore Gerard. So yeah, I'll spin you around, and it's looking absolutely superb. Not sure if I'm going to make the top for sunrise though. How good does that look? Absolutely fabulous. And we're uh, well into uh, spring now. Again, I've said this before. But uh, higher up in the Scottish mountains, winter continues on, even when it's nice and summery like down in the glen. So I've got my, I've actually got two ice axes with me today. My helmet, crampons. It's a grade one route, uh, Carmore Gerard Garrett that I'm going to be doing, CMD Garrett. But the real star of the show, for me coming around this way, is the view over to the north side of Ben Nevis. If you've done Ben Nevis from the other side, it's great, but you miss out on this wild and rugged side. So I'll bring you back when I'm up on the ridge uh, and I'll tell you why I started so early, not just, um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of reasons why, uh, not just to get up for sunrise, but there's another reason why I get started early. So I shall report back later. This is where the most ascent happens in the day. You start not far off sea level, but the wee walk in takes you to about 350 metres and then from there, up this section, you're ascending probably over 800 metres on fairly constant gradients. However, if you get a day like I did, the views are just stunning and the views to the north face, that, that alpine 
looking north face of Ben Nevis start to open up and it's well worth it. It's just a fantastic, fantastic place to be. Oh, nice colours and the band of Venus coming over to my, uh, over my back to the north and the west. Lovely. Oh, and the band of Venus means that the uh, sun's coming and I don't know if you'll make it out on the camera but the first rays are just starting to hit the bend, upper parts of the bend so yeah I think it'll probably be the first, because it's the highest point, be the first part of the landscape to see the sun but it's nice and pink, proper alpine glow. With Ben Nevis being the highest mountain, it gets the sun first and catches it before anywhere else. And the slope that I was on was actually, it wasn't getting the sun, not because it was lower than Ben Nevis, but because to the east of the mountain I was on are two very large mountains, Anik Beg and Anik Moor, and they were blocking the sun. Whereas as you can see behind me, the lower peaks far to the north were bathed in the morning sun. However, that did mean that I almost made it to the top for sunrise, as you're about to see. Just about made it for sunrise. Although the sun's been up for quite some time over on the bend, over there, you can see it. Uh, I, th I think I said this in my last, uh, well, the last time I came up here was when I was well camping, but I think I said that the bend hits, uh, gets the sun first and then uh, we get it here because it's lower down, but look at that, isn't that a sight to behold? And I'm heading up here, that's the first peak, but what a place. Look at that. Absolutely stunning, look at that. Wow, I'm going to take some photographs of that, I think it's quite nice, the sun coming up. Wow, right, let's do that. Woohoo! After taking some photographs I set on my way again and as I always say a little bit of sunshine always makes a world of difference. It just perks up your spirits and puts a spring in your step which is certainly what, sh what happened to me on this day and uh, yeah that spring was taking me closer to the first summit which wasn't too far away and at this point I was still relatively sheltered from the, uh, the winds which was nice. That was about to change at the top. What a place eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first summit it is 17 minutes past seven, and this summit sits at just under 1200 meters. It's not a Monroe, the next one is Carmor Gerard, and uh, yeah, it's a wee bit more breezy here, so I'm going to get another layer on, get my sunnies on before heading up to Carmore Jerrig. I don't need my, my the, so, the snow's kind of soft and I don't uh, don't need my crampons on just yet. I'll probably tool up when I get to the top of Carmore Jerrig. So anyway, let's get another layer on here. I'll get my sunny, sunglasses out. Put this head torch away as well, I think. <laughs> just noticed a big band of cloud coming over. That's no good, don't want that. <laughs> right, let's get this on. So the cloud was starting to form on some of the summits. It wasn't too bad at the moment, but I know that this can sometimes happen ahead of weather moving in, and that was the forecast for today. Oh. There was some weather forecast to be coming in in the afternoon with the wind strengthening markedly and rain eventually arriving, which it did, which it did, but at the moment I was keen to make the most of it. Knowing that that blue sky was going to disappear, I set about taking some pictures and grabbing some footage of this alpine environment. I mean, it just looks spectacular. I hope you agree. What a place. The footage is quite, yeah, quite good, but it's never as good as the naked eye. Anyway, here's some drone footage, hope you enjoy.
take the head off. Wind's picking up a bit, let's get across this arete. Of course, it was just down here that I did the wild camp. I'll maybe stick a playlist together if you want to go and watch some of the other adventures, because the last time I was up here was Ledge Route. I was going to do that today, actually, but anyway, I'll stick a playlist at the end. But yeah, I camped round about here, which was wonderful. But uh, anyway, right, let's go. <laughs> Stop the rehabbering on, Murray. No, no. Once we approaching the summit of Carmore Gerard, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to put my crampons on. It's much steeper down the other side and there is more consolidated snow here, so... Oh, hands are cold, I'm going to get my bigger gloves on as well, my thicker gloves. Oh, right. Let's get the crampons on. Oh. I've warmed up a wee bit actually, I was quite... Uh, I really was quite cold. My hands were really cold. Um, but it seems to have warmed up, so get my helmet on as well. I'm just going to take one ice axe, put my poles away. Oh, a wee bit of cloud coming in. And uh, yeah, I think I mentioned earlier on, this is where kind of. This is where. Well, I wouldn't say where my YouTube journey started, but it was certainly the first video. Uh, I did a, a video, very similar conditions, just not as much wind coming over the uh, CMD arete and it was the first video that kind of gained any traction people liked it and I think it got I don't know over a thousand views which at the time for me was just amazing and it kind of gave me the impetus to try and improve my videos and all that sort of jazz it got me hooked <laughs> uh, oh there's my broken behind me I'll spin you around and see if you can see it <laughs> let's just go around this way Hold on. Alright, let's go. I don't know what's going on. Not. No idea if you can see it. But, uh, yeah, block inspector. And Glory is behind me there. I don't know if that is being picked up by the camera, just because there's a wee bit of mist coming in. You can usually get that when the, it's your shadow cast on any cloud below you. You get your, your glories and your broken. But, uh, yeah, lovely. Right. Time to concentrate. I might have to put the big camera away and I've got my 360 camera, so I do apologise for any skewed looking footage. <laughs> right, let's go. I set off down from Carmore Gerard going to the array and that broken followed me with a fog bow which was lovely and at this point Ben Nevis was still peeking out above the clouds. It really is one of the best routes in Scotland. So this is just absolutely fabulous. <laughs> Proper winter nick. Um, the, the snow's really nice and consolidated as well. A uh, wee bit of powdery stuff here and there. But yeah, this is just wonderful, wonderful. Look at this. A wee bank of clouds just sitting over the uh, the arete every now and again. That's what's coming and going and giving me the, uh, the broken. So yeah, I've done this uh, route loads of times, but every time I come there's something different. It's just different conditions and but it's been a few years, so I'm really glad to get back here. This has got to be one of the best routes anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> Especially in conditions like this. Uh, keep it for a good day if you do come, but uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So let's crack on. I'll, I'll bring you back when I'm at the next peak along there. There's nothing too technical on the arete itself. It's a grade one winter climb, but you do have to just watch your footing, especially in conditions like today when the stones and the rocks were protruding from the snow but what a place as i said those mists that were lingering on the summits and across the red were just making it very very atmospheric that's me about halfway along uh, clouds coming again which is a bit of a shame i was going to stick the drone up and get some drone shots here but i don't think it's worth it i did take some drone shots uh, earlier on when i was on the first summit uh, maybe not of the arete but i would have got bits of it um, so I'm glad I did that then, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, even though the cloud's in, it's coming and going, I don't know if you can make out the bend behind me, it's every now and again it's appearing out of the cloud. Just fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So, uh, yeah, I'll drop down here a bit more, and then it gets narrower. I seem to remember it does, it does get narrower towards the end there. So I'll bring you back then, I might chat a wee bit about whether YouTube's worth it at the moment. <laughs> just look, just thinking back to the, 
the video that I did here, the, the very first video that gained any traction for me. So, yeah, maybe talk about that. But I'm going to uh, concentrate now. Maybe take some pictures because every now and again, the the clouds actually adding to the atmosphere, um, adding to the atmosphere, adding to the uh, the day. I think because it's it's just uh, making it a bit more atmospheric. <laughs> oh my God, I'm speaking an absolute load of nonsense, aren't I? Right, I'm going to put this away and crack on a bit further and uh, I'll bring you back. Oh, look at this, look at the memoirs. Woo wee! <laughs> Fantastic. Beautiful. Right, <laughs> put you away. On I headed, and this footage is from the 360 camera. Again, it does skew it quite a lot, but it uh, gives you an idea of how uh, rocky it is. And it's not as steep as it looks, but it's still not a place to trip up and fall, that's for sure. Or, you know, I wouldn't go on to the rate right if it was super, super windy. Um, there are bypass paths around most of the difficulties as well, but there are bits where it does narrow, as you'll see later on. Anyway, onwards away, it was lovely. Oh, that's lovely. Right, so, yeah, is YouTube, YouTube still worth it today? I think, I've been thinking about it because, as I said, the video that I did all those years ago kind of took off. It's maybe a bit harder now, but back back then there was less less people doing it, I suppose. Uh, in fact, I, at the time, I, I was a bit embarrassed. <laughs> I didn't want people to know that I was doing YouTube, and that's the main reason that the, the channel's called Scotland's Mountains. It was called my name before that, but I changed it because I didn't want... Well, one I thought was a bit pretentious. <laughs> I know that's all changed now, so I'm not having a pop at anybody out there that's got their name as a YouTube channel. Um, I kind of wish I'd kept my name, but anyway, I just kind of um, didn't want people to know what I was doing because it was a bit geeky, so I changed it to Scotland's Mountains. That didn't work out very well. Anyway, <laughs> is, it, is it still worth it? Well, I think it is. Um, you just you just need to get on with it and, and do it. And if your videos are of a good enough quality, then there's always somebody. Yeah, there's always uh, new channels starting. I, I'll watch some. There's lots of outdoor channels that I watch now that are are new and they're get lots of views. But it's not all about the views, as you know. Um, I still do these as a memento. I can look back on this in years to come. And as long as you're not doing it for money, because <laughs> unless you're uh, I don't know, unless you've got hundreds of thousands of subs, maybe millions, you're, you're in the wrong game if you're wanting to uh, <laughs> make some money. So you've got to enjoy it, so I think it is definitely still worth doing. But anyway, I'm kind of, yeah, I am speaking a load of nonsense today, I don't know. But, uh, let's crack on a wee bit. I've not yet told you why. The other reason why I got up early, I'll do that either at the top or at the, uh, the wee cairn. But yeah, let's go on. Let's see how we get on. Towards the end of the arete part itself, there are a few little bits uh, which steepen up. Uh, don't you can you can bypass them, but there's a couple of wee steps which you can clamber over as it starts to gain height again towards the end of the arete. And uh, yeah, the cloud was still coming and going. I was kind of hoping it was going to move from the summit when I got there, but I wasn't holding out much hope because uh, the forecast, as I said, was going hill, going downhill, should I say. Uh, for the rest of the day. Anyway, I was soon off the rocks and that heralded the end of the arete and uh, yeah, I was approaching the cairn that marks the end. This cairn marks the end of the arete. I'm gonna sit here, get a pole out, maybe have a bite to eat. I haven't had anything to eat yet today. Yeah, lovely, it was good. The snow wasn't as deep as, uh, well, not as deep as it could have been. I think sometimes it's easier when there's more snow because it's quite a rocky, it's quite a rocky route. You can't really get into your stride because there's so many rocks. <laughs> but uh, anyway, right, Scotch egg for breakfast. What time are we at? Half past nine, so let's do that and I'll report back in a wee while. Oh, that sun's breaking through again. Although it was only half past nine, that scotch egg was lovely. I had already been up for six hours and hadn't had anything to eat. All I'd had were a couple of coffees 
before leaving the van. But I knew the scotch egg is the food for kings and that would keep me going. <laughs> anyway, I finished with scotch egg and uh, enjoyed the rest at the cairn. And now it was time to tackle the final, it's about 200 metres from here, the final slopes up to Ben Nevis. And this bit always, always gets me, because you think you're almost there having tackled the arete, but this is, uh, this slow slope here, especially when it's in, well, snow, you know, it, it needs respect because there's long runoffs um, in, in all directions. And today I wouldn't have gone anywhere near it without crampons and uh, an ice axe, and that will certainly be the case quite long into the spring. Oh, the wind's picking up now. Whew. That slope's a beast. <laughs> well, it's giving me a beasting. Anyway, there's a summit just over there. Not too far now. I think there's some, there'll be some people up there. So I'll probably not do too many bits to camera. But uh, I'll maybe get the 360 camera out and uh, walk up to the top. But, oh, legs are tired. I'll report back when, uh, when I've got a wee bit more time to myself. That oh, wind's blowy. Oh, oh, oh. So there were quite a few people, uh, not that many in comparison to later on in, in the day, but yeah, um, you can see by the cloud wisping over my head, it was quite windy. I, I always try and reduce the wind noise, but I headed up to the, the summit with my 360 camera. I didn't uh, do any bits to camera. I get a bit uh, shy when there's people around. But, uh, I headed down to look at the fog bowl, uh, which was lo loitering over the north phase. I then about turned and took took the correct bearing. It's quite important to go the right way off Ben Nevis because there's lots of cornices and cliffs about. So just make sure if you're up here, you know how to get off if the mists come down. Oh, right. Oh, that's bright. I didn't stop and do a bit of the top because there, uh, there was folk there. Um, it's a Saturday, so I expect it to be busy. I'll probably meet quite a lot of folk coming up. I was going to go back down the CMD arrest, but uh, the other reason I left early is it's a deteriorating forecast. The winds are to pick up markedly. They already are picking up, to be honest with you. And then there's rain moving in this afternoon, so I think the winds on the uh, other side will be too uh, too high. So I'm going to head back down now, and I'll report back once I've passed all the crowds of people. <laughs> As expected, there were oh, hundreds of people that I passed on the way down the mountain who were heading up. And as you can see, there was snow pretty much all the way down to the halfway lock, and. In. To be honest with you, this is less snow than there usually is at this time of year. So just just be prepared that if you're coming up, even well into the spring, um, to expect winter conditions on the top of Ben Nevis. Oh yeah, I am sweltering. <laughs> the uh, spring in the glen, still winter on the top. I didn't do much filming on the sort of zigzag path off the Ben. It was just so busy. Um, I'm going to really, I'm going to sound really condescending here, but I must have gone past over a hundred people and I counted four. Winter boots, um, higher up, there was four people with crampons on, that was it. So just uh, just, just remember it is winter up there, you need both ice axe and crampons and know how to use them. But uh, anyway, yeah, I know I've not told you about my other grumble. I'll wait till I get back to the van and I'll tell you about my other grumble. God, I'm a grumpy old, grumpy old get. But anyway, for now, I'm going to uh, deal there, because as I said, I'm sweating. <laughs> right, how do we, uh, just a wee seat down there, played a bit with the drone. And now it's time to get going. I'll probably report back, I'll tell you my final grumble. <laughs> when I uh, get back down to the van, I've still got to cross this river. Which could be interesting. So if it is interesting, you'll see me at the river, try to cross it. Otherwise, I'll see you guys back at the van. Hopefully with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Which I'm really looking forward to. And uh, yeah, God, it's like spring down here, it's lovely. Right. See the van. Ah, right. Oh, back at the van. <laughs> there was no issues crossing the river. Uh, the, the levels were relatively low. I did. I just remember one time coming down and we had to shimmy across the, the fence that went across it. Anyway, um, yeah, I was going to tell you about my grumble, but I'll do that once I've told you just how happy I am. <laughs> I'm knackered. That um, that whole walk probably took about eight, eight and a half hours with all, all the filming. I was up early, but what a fantastic day. I never have a bad day on the Carmore Jerigar right? I think I always keep it for good weather. Um, and I'd certainly advise if you're going to do it, and if you don't mind a wee bit, I mean, it's hardly any scrambling. 
in, um, in that condition there, there was a few wee steps <clears throat> that I climbed up, but you could have bypassed them. The hardest bit was just the fact that the stone's protruding through the snow, it's, it's not very even. <laughs> and that slope up to the top of the bend is, uh, is energy sapping and did require crampons and ice axe. It was a grade one slope. But anyway, why am I grumbling? Well, parking. I've just spent the last half an hour trying to go into the Ringo app. Um, couldn't register, didn't send me verification codes. It was a bit of a disaster, so I just phoned them and I, the phone was good. It's, it's an automated phone um, system or service and I put in the location number and it just said it couldn't be found. So I, I spent 10 minutes trying to find the sign with this verification number. It was way at the back of the car park. I read somewhere that you couldn't park here overnight, which is fine, I can understand why, because there's yeah, people, you know, the, the small minority ruin it for the rest of us, leaving places like pigsties and toilets. But uh, I got in touch with them yesterday, the Forestry Commission, and just said, listen, I'll be coming up about 10 o'clock at night. I'm leaving at four in the morning to go up the hill. Can I, I don't mind paying twice, can I, you know, use the car park? And I got an email back saying, no, that's definitely not happening. So that's why I had to park about three miles away. <laughs> what amazed me, though, when I got here at half three or four o'clock in the morning, there was virtually no spaces because there was about a zillion camper vans here, so uh, I'm too much a bloody goody two shoes. But uh, yeah, I don't know what to do about the pain. Let me know if you've had any issues with that as well. I, I, I don't know, I've, I've tried to register a Ringo before, but it's not worked. But you would have thought the phone service would have, but it didn't. I'll maybe try again later. Rant over. Um, apart from that, it was a wonderful, wonderful day. My feet are sore. I'll sleep well tonight. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, you'll have seen all the footage, I've not seen it yet. I'm looking forward to seeing that and the pictures and all that sort of stuff. So if you've made it this far and you've made it through my rant, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there and I'll see you on the next adventure. I'm going to have another cup of coffee before driving home. See you next week.